<clears throat> Alrighty. Let's get this. Go on the road. Do -do -do -do. Back to my channel. Of course, my phone's on 25%. Alrighty, so we will exit out of that. And we will run into this. Alrighty, well, hello all, happy Sunday to you. Boeing Fan 727 is going to be your host today, your captain, your driver, your conductor, whatever you want to call me. I will be here today taking you through the Kiribati Valley Railroad and all of the progress I have made since episode number seven. Of course, going in numerical order, this is episode number eight, and today we got, uh, I'd say, a little bit more, a little bit of good news in store for you guys. We are approaching the southern terminus to the Carabasset Valley Railroad, which is set up for Eustace, Maine. I've um, been kind of doing a mad dash towards the southern portion of the line. I uh, really haven't been doing too much detail work in terms of that. I did take a break from it just because it was uh, monotonous, and I was getting bored of just laying track and adjusting terrain heights, so I went back and adjusted something, so I decided to do <clears throat> corrupt itself. We're just going to take a look and make sure everything works properly. All right, the cars are going over the intersection. That's always a good sign. But um, I did work a little bit on a key feature to the railroad. And if you all have recognized the location that I'm heading towards, you might be shaking your heads like, really? You better not have. Oh, but I did. I did. I reworked Carabasset Yard again. But this time, I have a layout that I'm absolutely 100% positively a-okay with. I am 100% good with this layout. I actually worked this off a real layout. Um, so, very happy with it. And welcome to the stream, Approach Medium. Welcome back. Hope you're just good with a hello. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> this is based off of on the uh, Hamill subdivision in Illinois. Uh, a good friend of mine, actually a co-worker, uh, still a good friend of mine, uh, Tim Price, worked, I believe, or had a uh, Illinois Terminal Familiarization book, because he worked for, uh, I believe, BNSF, and book, uh, and he was able to give me the full layout and the track lengths of a uh, Chateau Yard in Illinois. So I, I didn't, I mostly tr uh, track for track. Uh, specifically, the three tracks over here I kind of copied and. Uh, uh, the lag is real today. Copied. So we have three kind of storage tracks. The lengths are pretty much uh, patented down. You know, I pretty much got this done up. We also added a couple of industries along back here in Carabasset Yard. Um, somewhat true to what Chateau Yard has, but add a little lumber. Maybe transload facility, we can call it that, I guess. And then I added a small um, for both diesel and uh, regular gasoline uh, that gets loaded on the cars from under, let's just say underground tanks or whatnot. Maybe underground tanks just to have them. But so, yeah, this is the official and final layout of Carabasi Yard. I know I've said that a thousand times, and you probably all think I'm a major liar now, but uh, pretty much, yeah, this is what we're looking at for uh, Carabasi Yard. So this is really the, uh, I think that's one of the most prominent things that I did between this episode and the last one, so between episodes, or stream 7 and 8, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with it, very happy with it. I finally got the Y in, so we got the Y all set up, ready to go. 
So yeah, I'm I'm very happy with it. Also have this overpass right here leads into the the yard itself. Sorry, I am jumping around a lot, but yeah. So no, I'm I'm very. So yeah, so no. Okay, that works. Very happy with the uh, very happy with the layout and uh, looking forward to running around and playing with it because I really normally when I do a lot of work I like to just kind of screw around and just kind of test it out just relax a little bit every night I really haven't gotten been uh, kind of re I wouldn't say reorganizing but just kind of de you know adding some detail really taking some time to plan out the yard and whatnot and looking for things that I could add for detail but uh pretty much the bulk of what I've been doing but if we jump out <clears throat> and run down the line here now um, at the last episode I don't know what happened the save file corrupted or something went wrong to the point where my crossings weren't hooked up like the roads weren't hooked up the cars would disappear all the invisible track wasn't there anymore I don't know what happened so the even the triggers wouldn't work so I had to revert to um, <clears throat> a autosave from the autosave of the autosave, which I'm happy with there, but it wasn't exactly what it did last time. So um, the little lake up here by this crossing isn't here. I redid the river so it's closer now. Some things are different, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, if we go down the line a little bit, it's now going down a very gradual grade. I think it's a 0.67% grade that goes down. I think one of the actual, you know, smoothest grades or smoothest continuous grades that I have on this whole damn line. But um, we're coming up to here, and I was actually watching a, a video of yours, Approach Medium, and uh, I think it was the P and B route tour, and you might recognize this bit from your route, but roughly you might get the idea that I was going for but I really kind of like the idea of the line coming through like a little marshy area and whatnot it was just some, something struck me about that one particular little bit and I think I almost I don't want to say exactly copied and pasted it but I just liked the idea and I want to try and recreate it in my own sense because it just it kind of seems like something that you would well you'd see it anywhere but something in particular you might see up in northern Maine a very marshy area so what I kind of did here was I had the, uh, what I'm now calling the, uh, yeah, no, I remember that, because I was, I was just watching it, and I had to keep, I kept going back to it. It was one of those guys, like, oh, I gotta go watch that again, I gotta go watch that again, and I just kept looking at it, and, uh, I'm like, that would look very good in a main setting, especially with the trees, well, I mean, the trees kind of pressed up against, and I'm sure there's some dead tree assets that I could find and whatnot, I just kind of, felt it'd be good and yes it is very many in a sense but uh so like so the upper Kennebec kind of comes into like this lake or m marshy or swampy area you can call it whatever you want I'm gonna try and get like a, a number of little islands in here with some tall grass and some dead trees on it but yeah it kind of comes down here into this little little area and you know the river in theory the slow current would kind of swing left and then continue on and then it would spit out over here somewhere I don't know what it's gonna I don't know where it's gonna go but I just kind of like the idea so I put this little like marshy area where the tracks come down relatively close to to the to the marsh area so very happy with that call me a copycat but that's just what I wanted to do yeah, no, I'd like to see, I'd like to see you detail yours versus me because I, I mean, I could probably do it all right, but you could do it like eighty times better. So, got a small little crossing in the works here. Probably gonna put some, you know, very rural houses. It's a very, very rural crossing. I was trying to go. I downloaded these roads from the jointed rail that they think they put up the, this week or last week. Uh, obviously, last week, but. Um, I don't know, I just like them. They also kind of gave me a very main feel to it. You know, this kind of very broken dirt or grout or uh, paved road on top of, you know, some dirt. Just looked very 
Maine to me. They've been watching a lot of uh, rail fanners up and around Maine who follow the CMQR or the, you know, they go up the, was it the Madawaska sub or, I forget what sub it is, but they go up, pretty much follow the CMQR as it travels through, you know, this area of Maine that I'm trying to recreate and, um, you know, trying to take a lot of tips and look at the scenery that they are seeing up their way, but hoping I'm capturing it just well enough. The line comes along, slowly kind of meanders. You know, we're approaching Eustace Yard. I got this little dirt road down on the left that I need to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with it. Got another little crossing here as, of course, we get closer to the yard and uh, to Eustace, Maine. Eustace, Maine is kind of the, one of the larger communities up that way. Um, so we're going to probably see a few more crossings as we do approach the yard. And currently, the original plan for the line was to have a north and south terminus. Um, southern terminus being Eustace, Maine. Northern terminus being uh, Lake Meganic. I have opted to create a eastern terminus, and this is kind of where it splits off. Probably going to need to create another entry right there. This originally was just going to be an industri industry um, industry track that just kind of led down to maybe like a, a wood facility or whatever you want to do it. Hello, Chris. Welcome back to the stream. But this uh, actually is going to be our new uh, a new mainline track that leads to the eastern terminus. I don't know specifically where I'm going to have that this terminus go or where it's going to end up in Maine. But, uh, you know, just, just something a little bit more. Because as it was, I think the main line from north to south would approximately be 25 miles. So just to give a little bit more mileage and a little bit more to do than 25 miles... This would probably be a little bit better. But as I've said, we're getting very close to Eustace and to Flagstaff Yard. The only reason why I'm calling it Flagstaff Yard, because you are probably thinking, you might be thinking, I'm hoping you're thinking, if you're watching this video, because if not, you might be dead, and that's a problem. But, um, is why are you calling it Flagstaff Yard? Isn't Flagstaff out in Arizona? Well, yes, but, um, I believe there's a lake right next to uh, Eustace, and if we pop back this way to continue my jumping around, I know that you all love. Uh, Flagstaff is a lake right next to Eustace, and yep, there it is on my sign. On my little sign. Right here. So the three kind of big, big things we're aiming for is Tim Pond Road, Flagstaff Lake, and Eustace. Eight and a half miles from this very sign. Um... So Flagstaff Lake, I believe, is the big lake that the Kennebec River uh, drains from. So, in theory, the upper Kennebec is going to lead into the Flagstaff Lake, which then Flagstaff Lake is going to lead into the Kennebec River. Aside from ge geographical features, the yard, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to put the yard next to Flagstaff Lake, so hence for why we're calling it Flagstaff Yard, because I really didn't think Eustace Yard had a nice little flow to it. I mean, it just didn't really work for me. I'm like, Eustace Yard. Eustace Yard. Eustace Yard. El Eustace Yardo. Something like that. I couldn't really get it to sound good in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> really could not. So Flagstaff Yard is going to be what we're calling it. So I believe from what I've worked out is approximately two and a half tiles equals a mile. So we go from this sign, like right about here. So it's it's approximately half a tile. So we'll just say, you know, we got one mile right here. Okay, good. Two. We go three up to this this tile right here. Four. And then we have about five miles. I mean, if you go here, I'm going straight too. So got about five miles. So all we need now is six, seven, eight. Eight miles to the Eustace Town line. I'm probably going to say another mile to the yard. So about, you know, we're just going to say we're pretty much there. We got a couple more tiles to go. So let's get moving because I want to get to this yard. I'm so ready just to be done with just dragging track and adjusting to rain height because it is so, and I know it has to be done, but. Every ounce of my being's like, oh, we gotta put trees. Oh, I gotta make a town. I gotta put signs. I gotta build a river. Nope. 
we gotta drag the track. So that's pretty much all this episode's gonna be. We're just gonna be building track. And planning out the future layout for Flagstaff Yard. And as I look back towards the chat, Chris finally has the UP1989. I do not. I've bought three things from the jointed rail, and only one of them works. I bought the CNSD40 Phase 2 No Dynamic Brake. Does not work. I bought... Where did it go? Ah, yes. The Guilford Rail GP9 High Hood does not work. But I did get the uh, HLCX SD60. That works. So, at least one of them works. I think uh, I just have some older, outdated assets that just don't work for uh, Trains a New Era or something like that. You know, a little disappointing. But I got them at a pretty good price. So, I'm not, you know, I'm not too upset. And plus, with all the... Amazing freeware content that I've downloaded from the Jointed Rail. I'll just uh, I'll just consider it a donation in a sense, but I would like to hopefully get those working, especially that GP9 high hood. Oh, love to get that working, especially considering it is Guilford and decent Guilford content is lacking very much. So. You know, I've downloaded all the dependency packs, and still nothing. That's the sad thing, is they still don't work. You know, I've played around with dependencies and whatnot, and it just it still does not work. Which is the... The Bob tried just about everything that I could possibly think of. But, I mean, I know that, that song says two out of three ain't bad, but I mean one out of three ain't bad. And like I said, with all the freeware content that I've downloaded from them, you know... Um, yeah, no, I could always open up the arrows here. I mean, I don't know if you want me to do that now, but, I mean, I could. Or we could do that later, but. But yeah, I just, I could not figure it out what it, what the issue was. I just kind of came to the conclusion that you know, might be older and whatnot, it just may not be updated properly for Tane or something, I mean, beats me, so. Beats me. Is that curve too sharp? Uh, like, right up here it is. Yeah, no, definitely. I'd like to, you know, because it's a Guilford GP9, man. <laughs> that's, you know, that's kind of uh, something that you would definitely see along this portion of the line. And that, that CNSD40, I mean, you know, that's that's something that you will see along the line. But that Guilford, man. Oh, I only have one decent Guilford engine, and that's from uh, RR Mods. But... You know, yeah, we can definitely take a look at that later. Which also, speaking of trains and engines and stuff, I have decided to uh, go ahead and uh, I have created a fleet. If more or less, why did I make that? I don't want that tile. But I have gathered a fleet for uh, the Carabasset Valley Railroad. Now, I've taken some long consideration for this, about 30 minutes worth, and uh, kind of, you know, gathered a couple engines that I, I would like to have on the line or in my, uh, in a fleet for, for the Carabasset Valley Railroad, because I am going to be using it completely as a short line, you know, along with Guilford and along with Pan Am whenever that content comes out, and, you know, alongside the, you know, Canadian, Canadian National, but, uh, I decided to use some, you know, very, very, oh, excuse me, uh, very, I wouldn't say uh, old, but very well used secondhand engines. And uh, we're, I'm opting to use uh, the EMD F7A and B units. 
I'm using the uh, GP. Let me see. I'm just going to pop out one more time. Sorry, guys. Um, where did it go? Oh, yeah. We're using the General Electric U18B. The 15 1. And we're also using some XCSX engines. We're using the C30 7s. Just kind of felt, you know, they would be, you know, some good second hand engines to have running around on the line. You know, those C30 units definitely, definitely, definitely are going to be good, you know, for this portion of Maine. GP15, you know, some, some good workhorses, more or less. Some very good, uh, you know, heavy work oriented engine, something that, you know, we could definitely abuse and use, but very, very uh, excited. I do have a buddy of mine who's never really done a train's uh, skin, but he's very proficient at painting on uh, X-Plane. He is working on uh, making a skin for the Carabasset Valley Railroad, something that I've had in mind for a while. But uh, I don't know when he'll be done. I don't know when he's going to start it. I just know that I've asked him to work on it, and he said he'd give it a go. And, uh, you know, if he if it turns out well, then he'll do more. But if not, you know, cool beans. But it's just nice to kind of get things moving along with the CB, CBVR. Kind of getting some things squared away that I've been wanting to get squared away because... You know, originally, I wasn't going to, you know, make it a functioning company. It was just going to be, you know, using Pan Am or using the CB or using the uh, CMQR. But, you know, very, very happy to have that and uh, hopefully have something to show you guys here in the next month or so. Just depends on when he gets time and whatnot. How steep is that grade? Uh, okay. All right. Very, very shallow grade that works for me. So that was five miles. So this is okay. In other side notes, I hope you all are having a or had a good week. Hope you all are enjoying the weather wherever you can enjoy it. I most certainly did not, especially last night at work. I got soaked. We've had some very uh, extreme rains here in St. Louis, and uh, I got to work yesterday about three o'clock. Looked out towards the west of the airfield saw this just wall of black. You know, three in the afternoon, this wall of black looked like death, like creeping death. It was moving in on the airport. And we're just watching it roll over the field, and it's very hot, and it's very muggy outside. We're just watching it. And this wall of black gets over the airport, and just the whole air just kind of goes silent and, you know, just very stagnant. It was just very weird, and... We're all looking up, and we, you know, I work at the in an airport that's been hit by a tornado, had a direct hit by a tornado. I wasn't there. I wasn't even in the Midwest at the time, but you know, St. Louis Airport been hit by a tornado. So I work with guys who were there that night when the tornado hit, and they're just looking up at the sky, and it's got that kind of you know green hue to it. It's got this like green tint, you know, something uh. You don't have to be from the Midwest or a tornado-prone area to know that that's just not right. You know, that is absolutely 100% a little concerning when the sky is green. So we're all looking up, and we're watching clouds churn and rotate and stuff. You know, we're watching the upper-level clouds move one way, and we're watching these lower-level clouds go the other way, and in the middle, we're watching them all kind of mix, and, you know, we just all kind of got this uneasy feeling, and uh, we were all kind of standing outside at the moment. And, uh, you know, and then lightning came down on, I wouldn't say close, but it was close enough to where uh, 
our lightning system, what we call Sparky, uh, issued a code red, so the ramp closed to all ramp agents. So we're all kind of just standing right outside the door of the break room, you know, because we can be right there, because we got guys that, that smoke and they go outside during some thunderstorms and kind of hide up against the side of the building. They're relatively protected from the elements right there, but uh, so we're all kind of standing right outside the door and we're watching, uh, you know, the supervisors because they are running around trying to get the our uh, open carts covered because you know we got bags outside and it's just, it's gonna start pouring you know because we're watching not only this black cloud that moved over the airport we're not only watching the lightning we're not watching the clouds swirl we're also watching this wall of rain <laughs> march across the airfield you know and it, it's a you can see it you can see it coming from all the way on the other side of the runways you, you were watching it so the supervisors are running around trying to get all the carts covered and this big old lightning bolt just comes down <laughs> and strikes this uh, right about where gate 24 sits. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Lambert Airport in St. Louis, but we're under gate 18 and it goes up by even numbers. So we're up at gate 18, so then it goes 18, 20, 22, 24. So it's, it's you know, right there. Comes down over our heads and strikes the top of the terminal. It, it was right there. It was seeing here all at the same time, like a major explosion. And you want to see grown men like hit the deck and then run oh my god i was one of them <laughs> someone screamed like a little girl it wasn't me but it was it was pretty comical to see all these you know big tough men just uh hit the deck and run like their lives depended upon it but uh yeah and then it, a little some hail started falling and whatnot it was it was pretty sucky but yeah it started raining about like i said 3 three thirty, and uh i didn't get off till midnight and it it just poured all night. It never stopped or let up. It just poured all night. <laughs> and I I got stuck outside during that, and it was absolutely 100% miserable. <laughs> you know, because my boots, my boots, relatively waterproof, but there was just so much rain that, you know, when you work on anything concrete or live anywhere with a lot of concrete, when it pours like that, concrete doesn't absorb rain, Sky. It just, it does not absorb anything. So, with all that rain, it did not have anywhere to go, except just sit there and pool and make everything miserable <laughs> than it already was, so. Um, and then we just kept going between what we call Code Yellow, which is, we can be outside. Lightning is present within eight miles of the airport. Um... We just can't use our wire, wireless headsets when we're pushing a plane out. And if we don't want to use our handheld radios, then we don't have to. But we can be outside on the ramp. Code red is lightning is present of the airport within three miles, and the ramp is be shut down. And this is not a predictive system because you cannot predict lightning. It is all off of see and report. So whenever they see it on the radar, that's how they do it. And we just kept bouncing back and forth between code yellow, code red, code yellow, code red, code yellow, code red. I mean, we did get to a point one night, or last night, where they had given us the all clear to return back to the ramp. And this another big lightning bolt came down, and we have Boeing at the air, airfield. They build the fighter uh, fighter jets. They build F-15s, F-18s, and the new, uh, the new trainer. I, I don't know what it's called. But this new Air Force trainer jet that they uh, that they've built, they built it here at uh, Lambert St. Louis Airport. So this another big lightning bolt came down over the field and struck somewhere over by Boeing. But they given just had come over the radar to give us the all clear or that the ramp is open again. And no sooner than they said that, this lightning bolt comes down and strikes Boeing. And I mean, I saw the sparks fly from wherever the heck it struck. I don't know where it hit over there, but you saw the sparks flying on the other side of the field. And it's like, yep, it's all clear to turn back to work. Um, are you sure about that? Are you really sure? Because I, I just saw that happen. I know you just saw that happen, so I don't know why you're saying it's all clear. But, yeah, it was absolutely a nightmare. We had a couple planes divert to Indianapolis. I think we had one go up to Midway. It was one fun evening. And I did find out a neat little trick. I'm sure you all probably might know about it but having my boots kept soaking through like i said they were they're relatively waterproof but there was just so much water that uh you know my boots finally soaked through and i had i get bad athlete's foot real quick you know if my feet sit in you know something wet for too long 
So I kept having to go to the, the, the locker room and take off my boots and hold them up to the, the handheld dryer, one of those like really powerful handheld dry or those hand dryers, not handheld, but those hand dryers. I kept having to hold my boot up to that just so I could wear it and go back to work and you know I'd it would work and I'd put it back on and I'd have this nice warm boot and you know, dry my socks too and put those on and then I'd go back to work and no sooner than I get back outside and get to start working again boot would soak through and I had to work for that for a little bit longer and go back inside, dry my boot, dry my socks, get them back on, go back out, go do it again. It's just, it was a process and I just, I've never seen it rain so much in a, just in a day. I mean, I've never seen it just pour all day long, just pour and pour and pour and pour. It is just ridiculous, so ridiculous. So I said this was the five mile marker. I believe it was said it was a half. Sorry, I'm gonna count again just so I know what I'm doing. So that's one, two, no, one, boop, two, okay, three, four. Let's up the curve. Five, two, six, okay. So one more tile is going to be seven. I'll just put that down for right now. But yeah, no, it was, <clears throat> it was just a nightmare. I mean, we had... You know, and when, of course, when we go to Code Red, the plane, we, you know, no one can be out there. So it's like, you know, we got planes that are ready to go, people that are ready to get to their destination. Um, you know, we, we can't be out there. We can't push the planes back. So, you know, people are all on the plane, all ready to go. The plane's ready to push. Can't go anywhere. You no, know, they don't have anyone to pull it, put it, pull it out, or push it out, not pull it out, push it out. You know, so. And just keep that in mind. It's like if you guys ever go flying and you got, you know, bad weather, and it specifically if you're flying southwest, I don't know how the other airlines do with uh, weather like that or not. But um, I do want to get another kind of gradient going down. I think we'll do a negative 0.32. Should work. I think it worked. But um, if you're ever flying southwest, and you know, it's, it's kind of bad weather, kind of thunderstorming and whatnot. Just keep in mind that you know we're doing every you guys. Uh, you know, get out on time, and, you know, we're doing everything in our power to, you know, get your plane out as quickly as we can, you know, before a thunderstorm. It's just, there's only so much we can do to make sure that happens. You know, we're going to try and make sure that your bags are going to stay dry. And, I mean, this is m most everyone, you know, there are a few guys in the ramp that they just don't care. It's not all the company, but, you know, I'm, I'm finding particularly here, and, and my station in St. Louis, they're just a couple guys that really just don't care. They're just there because it's a good paying job and, you know, the world just somehow owes them. But I think that's anywhere in general in any job. But, you know, not to bash on my coworkers, but it it does get annoying because, you know, it's like, hey, that's somebody's stuff that you're just leaving out on the ramp, uncovered, unprotected. But more often than not, what we're trained to do is, you know, we're, we're trying to make sure that your stuff stays dry and that, you know, your plane gets out on time. You know, but at the same time, we are working completely exposed to the elements. We are 100% exposed. You know, when there is lightning present of the airport or in our general vicinity, you know, there is nothing that's protecting us. It's just we're hoping that in that, you know, very odd sense that it strikes the plane versus us or it strikes the, the building versus us or it's going to hit something well before it even decides to hit us. So, you know, we're definitely trying our hardest. Wait, I didn't want to go down to that level. I wanted to... Crap. 
wanted to have a little bit of a raised area for it. I think right here. We'll grab whatever. Yeah, that works for me. You know, we're doing everything in our power to make sure that you guys get out on time and that your bag stays dry and that, you know, you're going to get there before this storm rolls in and just screws everything up. But like I said, we are 100% exposed to the elements. So when if you ever get on a plane and it's just miserable outside, I already approach you. Take it easy, sir, and uh, we'll talk with you later, and hopefully we could. Get those uh, get those assets fixed for my trains, because I would love to use those, but thanks for popping in, man. But, um... So it's it's just we're working hard, you know, to make sure that you get out. But just have some understanding because that's one thing that I found is and it's, I was this way before. I was flying once from Baltimore to St. Louis to see my girlfriend, and this was before I started working for the airline. Uh, I got stuck in Baltimore. I got stuck in the plane on the tarmac during a very torrential thunder, you know, big major thunderstorm. Um, and I, I, I was really upset at the guy that was loading the plane because I thought he was intentionally going slower because of the thunderstorm. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where you know you're going to get the plane out on time. You know you're going to beat the storm. You got time to work with and whatnot, so you work hard. But there's other times where it's like you know you're not going to get out on time. There's a ground stop. A, you know, the captain knows that he ain't going to go on time. So you're not rushing. You know, you're just trying to get the bags on the plane. You know, you're very, con you're you're keeping a watchful eye out for the storm and lightning, and just you know to kind of keep an eye on what's going on around you. So you're not rushing as hard. But when I saw this guy on the ramp just taking his dear sweet time, I was so enraged at him. Just like, what is this guy doing? He is completely and utterly screwing everything up. And we're gonna get stuck out here on the ramp, which we did. We got stuck out on the run or on the taxiway, along with other line of planes, you know. Because at least if we figured, all right, well, we can get pushed out. Is probably what happened was they figured, all right, let's at least get the plane pushed out and out there. You know, it's not going anywhere, but at least we're out there. At least we're ready to go, which could also cut, turn back around and bite them in the butt because if that ground stop goes too long then we start getting fined i think if we go over like three hours but at that point we would have returned to the gate um but anyways you know so at least we're out there at least you know when this storm clears up we're ready to go so but i was just so enraged at this man like i said i was so upset because now i'm stuck on on the ground and i'm not in st louis i'm not with my girlfriend that's wasted time that's time that i don't have to be sitting in Baltimore, of all places. You know, I really don't want to be in Baltimore. But that's where I was. So, but it's it's it was just cool to get to see the other side of it when I was uh, in training for Southwest it, to learn all about this stuff that they have in place and what they do and whatnot. And, you know, even the little video that we watched, like, you know, if you've ever been stuck outside on a plane been stuck in a plane you know just be know that there are people working hard to to get you there and get your your you know get your moving along and whatnot and it was just cool to to hear that and learn that and see that oh there were people that cared about my flight and were concerned about me getting out on time and whatnot but um but i understand you're probably here for trains probably not here to listen about planes but that's just my work and i kind of figured someone might be interested to hear about it as for your question chris um i'm gonna be talking to him later is it anything that you know i could ask him that maybe you could get answered through me or whatnot or you know i don't know if i can help out but you know he does have to get some stuff taken care of today and when he's gone oh he's gone so 
what is your question for Mr. Approach, Chris? I'll see if I can get that taken care of for you. If you would like. And while I'm waiting for that to be asked, what we're doing here is, like I said, we're getting relatively close to, to Flagstaff Yard. So I'm creating uh, I'm creating two tracks on the main line, uh, one being the, the main line track and the other one being a uh, kind of a holding track or a siding track for a train to sit and wait, you know, for someone to pass or, you know, I'm just giving more entry points to the yard itself. Well, I do know I could probably half answer it for you, but I can, you know, I can definitely uh, ask that to him. But uh, he's uh, he's still a little busy right now. His uh, he's a little busy with some things going on between with his job and stuff like that. You know, I, I can't answer that entirely for him, and I don't know what he would want me to answer. And you know, I'm not him, but. He's still pretty busy with his move and whatnot. Um, you know, he's still trying to get some things taken care of. You know, his computer quit last week or the week before. He had to build a new one. Um, you know, so he's in the process of doing that. So he's in the process of kind of getting everything set up still. He's still looking for a place to live. You know, he's with some, some family and some relatives right now. You know, I, I can't answer that whole question for him. Again, I'm not him, but... Uh, this is what I know. This is what he said in his videos that he has put up uh, lately or recently and whatnot. You know, the minute that he has time to put up videos, he will. Um, it's just he's a little busy right now, and uh, he will have content coming out soon. You know, he, he wants to get content out, <laughs> but... Uh, hold on a second, Chris. And who texted back, Dylan? But, um, you know, he will start putting up videos he wants to because, you know, his channel is doing well. It's growing very well. It's just he's not stopping now. He, don't worry. He's not going away. It's just he's very, very busy and very, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No, he's working hard towards uh, getting everything set up and uh, getting his life sorted out. So that's all the information that I have, all the information that... I know I can answer that he's already said. So once he does get that, you know, once he does get a place to live, once he gets his computer back up and running, which should be pretty quick here, I'm sure he'll bring out more content. It's just we got to be patient with him and let him uh, let him get this big transition of his life sorted out, you know, because it's big. You know, he just got a new job. That's something that he's very happy and very, very... Uh, yeah, no, very, very happy, and I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, he's very, very happy with that. But like I said, that's all all that I have, all that I know. Like I said, it, he's he said it a few times in his videos, but it has been a while, and, you know, I'm always very happy to answer what I know. I'm not going to tell you guys anything I don't know and that's stuff that I haven't heard or stuff that I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't want me to say because, like I said, all that stuff is what he said before, so... He will be he will be back soon and I'm sure the PNB will be back up. I mean he from as far as now really hasn't touched it because he hasn't been able to, so he's been very busy. Like myself, you know, it's he's I would wanna I don't I'm not trying to compare myself to him, but you know, we're very much alike in the sense that, you know, we have very, very busy lives and whatnot and you know, I'm gonna be coming up here soon and I'm gonna be looking for a place to live on my own and whatnot and you know, that's going to take up a large portion of my free time. So when that time comes, you know, I'm going to disappear for a bit. Not as heartbreaking as him disappearing. I am I could uh, be assured of that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. And Matt texted you back. I think he friended me or he started following me on Instagram. And he friended me on Facebook recently, which I could not figure out. But... You know, very nice to hear from him, I suppose. 
I won't ask what he said on a live stream, you know, because that's, I don't know if you'd want to just share that information with us, but very, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I'm assuming you whack your head off the shelf every now and again. Because I had a bed like that for a while. Oh, you're, that's right, you're on the RAV now, Dylan. How is that? How's she be treating you? You ever, Is it everything you thought it was going to be? Oh, well, kitty cats love climbing around on stuff. She just loves you. Yeah, no, I'd still kick your ass, Dylan. I would still ki absolutely kick your butt with my car. I don't like this setup. We're going to redo it. Just saying, you know, it's a... I mean, that's impressive, but... I mean, I got the Interceptor, so... <laughs> I I was built to catch you. My car, that's all my car was built for, was to catch your car. And be faster than your car. And I wouldn't say outmaneuver your car, but do a whole lot better than your car. At least pursue your car. But if given the circumstances... Way to go, Dylan. Way to go. Oh, you call your cat Satan. That ain't nice. That ain't nice. I grew up with cats. Everyone everyone I've ever met, or most everyone I've ever met, hates cats. I cannot figure out why. They call them nature's speed bumps. I mean, I grew up with cats, so I'm just... You know, my mom's always had cats. I grew up with them. It's just I'm used to them. And they're, they're great to have around. I love having cats. It's just, yeah, they can, they can be a little finicky at times, but definitely they're not... They're not horrible. I don't, I, just, I just don't get the the bad rap that cats get for some people. I, I just don't. I just don't get it. You know, I get. I get. No, no. Everyone's a cat person, but I've been a little busy doing. If you were here, maybe about two minutes ago, I was just talking about all my work experiences and the whatnot. I mean, I've been a little busy to the point where. I haven't even streamed like I wanted to, or done much of anything that I've wanted to. I've just been busy. The work life, though. Three hours ago was noon. I was still asleep. And yes, I slept in today. It's my day off. I can do that. And I had my phone on do not disturb mode, so I probably never even got the notification saying you called. Oh. Ouch. Probably actually want to have the track go straight for a while. I don't really think that it could use another curve. So that's what we'll do. We'll have the track just go straight for a while. As we come into town. In your company's eyes, Dylan, you were supposed to ask. Because I've gotten that one before. Jaden, why aren't you at work? Uh, because it's my day off. No one 
you know, it's my day off. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. You were supposed to work today. Why come no one told me? Well, why didn't you ask? I didn't know I was supposed to ask. Where, what? In what world was I supposed to ask? I thought the manager or someone was supposed to tell me. It's like on a schedule somewhere that, oh, hey, Jaden, you're working, by the way, tomorrow. Oh, I am? Yeah, see, look here on the schedule. Or, oh, hey, you know, we know we gave you that day off, but we have to have you work now. Oh, okay, that's cool. Thank you, guys. That I appreciate you for letting me know. That's That's real good of you. Yep, nope, that's that's all cool. Then I go to work. Uh, nope. No one, uh, no one told me. Well, you never asked. That I hated that excuse. Hated that. You never asked. What do you mean I'm supposed to ask? It's your job to tell me I'm supposed to work, you idiot. Oh, hated that. That was one of my biggest pet peeves when I worked. I, uh, I don't have that problem at this job. They just mando me a lot, and... I had to refuse today. They wanted to mantle me for today, but I had to refuse and whatnot, and I got a lot of crap for it. They were really upset that I refused and whatnot, but I had stuff to take care of. You know, my I already live at the airport and whatnot, and but it was just they were very, very upset that I refused to work, and it's like, listen, I'm sorry, but I got stuff I want, I need to do, stuff that I need to get taken care of, you know, stuff that I cannot wait to do any longer, you know, and, you know, I'm sorry I'm refusing Mando, but at the same time, I mean, I get it, it's, well, it's called mandatory for a reason, well, I understand it's called mandatory for a reason, but we are also given the option to refuse it as well, if we so wish, if you if it's every damn week, then yeah, I could see the problem, but I don't really refuse Mando that often, if at all. all right, so that was the seven mile one. So this is the eighth, so we are pretty much in Eustace now, which I'm pretty happy about. So that means we are getting closer to the yard, getting close to the southern terminus to this line, which brings us one step closer to being completed, I suppose. You know, at least with track layout design. Next step will be placing buildings and detail around here and, you know, getting detail done up along the line, because I'm going to zoom it one more time. I mean, you can start to see things getting filled in, more color being added along the line. I mean, we got Carabassi Yard done up, and I mean, it definitely looks like a lot from when you're sitting right there, but when you look at all this... All the gray space that's left, I mean, it's still, we still have a lot to go. We still have a lot left to go. But it's nice, because like I said, we're seeing more color get added onto the line, and a little bit does go a long way, because that's just one less thing we have to do now. You know, I'm imagining the areas between Carabasset and Warren, you know, I'm, I'm imagining I can get that done relatively easy. And then we have a pretty good section of track all detailed up, you know, between Carabasset and Warren. And then it's not too much to go from Warren to, well, the, I forget what I called this area. This was the old Salmon, this was the old Salmon Lake sub. And this is the Warren Industrial Park sub, or the Warren Industrial sub, or branch, I'm sorry. the Salmon Lake branch and Warren Industrial branch. So... I guess your train didn't want to train today. But, you know, it's not too much further to go from Warren to the old Salmon Lake branch. And it's not too much further to go from the Salmon Lake branch to the tunnel, and then the other end of the tunnel to go to Victoria. And then, I mean, this is going to be a nightmare. I can already tell you this. This stretch of track is going to be a pain in my butt because it's just long, it's monotonous, it's just trees. Maybe a couple houses here and there, but it's just long. But I do got to go take a quick little restroom break. I will leave you guys here with a view of, uh, I suppose, of Main Street Warren for a few minutes while I... Because uh, that's something I'm going to need to take care of.
that I need to do. So I will be right back.
Alrighty, I am back. Sorry about that. Need a quick little, quick little break there. So, um, also, I am going to be uh, hopefully getting a little more uh, in tune with social media for my uh, YouTube channel. So, I do have some ideas that I want to implement. I did talk to Approach Medium. He said Twitter was kind of a, a good way to go. I don't use Twitter at all. I don't really feel like making a Twitter account. I'm not really big into Twitter. Really just not my thing. So uh, I do have a Facebook group that I will be making and whatnot. I will be putting up reviews of uh, trains, Carabasset Valley Railroad that I'll be putting up every now and again. Uh, I'll be posting a lot to there. So if you want to follow me there, I do have a Snapchat. If you guys want to follow me on Snapchat, uh, username is BoeingFan727. So if you want to go ahead and find me on more than welcome to. I will be posting, letting you guys know... Uh, when I'll be streaming next, if you guys ever want to catch that, um, that'll be on there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I gotta. I know Google Chrome's the thing, but uh, I, I guess I could use that. So, but definitely Facebook and uh, oh, just the dog. Facebook, Snapchat, and uh, oh, I do have an Instagram too. If you guys ever want to follow me on there, I have an Instagram. I can post that as well, but. Predominantly Snapchat and uh, Facebook. I'm trying to hopefully grow my channel a little more. Um, if you have any friends that enjoy watching trains as well, or might know someone that might enjoy this series, uh, please let them know. Uh, if you can just help me get the word out about my channel, help me get the word out about here, that it just helps me out because I'm trying to grow my viewer base just a little more and whatnot than what I already have. So. Um, any, anything helps. So just if you guys could get me going, just help me get my channel going, it would just help me out so much. But anyways, so hopefully now we got that all taken care of. So let's get back to business as usual. So I hope you all enjoyed that wonderful view of Main Street Warren. Something that I'm, I still love seeing, still love going up and down. I love... Love that little portion of track, the little street running. I've always thought about redoing it, you know, maybe actually getting the train on the street, but I, I like it just as is, having this, the train run completely up the middle of the road. All right, so we are coming up on the eight mile portion stretch of track. So, this is probably the first quarter mile portion of it, so. <coughs> Pardon me, I am falling apart, again, per usual, per every live stream, but... Make sure that's straight. Which I don't think it is, but I don't know how that's possible. I have never ever seen that done, but clearly you have found something unique within your trains, but I am gonna take my attention away from the chat just for a moment because I just wanna dart to the dart to the end of this segment we're doing here cuz i am ready to start doing something else i'm ready to maybe start screwing around with with the yard itself or just getting some crossings built i would love to build some crossings during um during this cuz uh, i've never actually shown you guys how to do that and it'd just be nice to I don't know. I, I just like building crossings. Love building some custom crossings. It's all. It's all I do. You know, I don't use any default crossings because they don't work well. They, they kind of, frankly, suck in my opinion. But alrighty. So coming up on that, make just a small little jog to the side. All 
already. I got four people watching. Not bad. Not bad at all. If I got four people watching, it's uh, it's a pretty decent enough number, I'd say. But if there's one thing I do enjoy about building crossings, it's when I have it go through an intersection and I gotta time the traffic light and work it out to uh, you know, work with the crossing and whatnot, and I just do something about that I just thoroughly enjoy. All right, here comes the half mile stretch. And that will be eight miles as of that half right there, I believe. I hate to do this again, I'm sorry. I just gotta count one more time. So that half, one, two, three, four, And that's five, six, this half, and seven, eight as of this half. So then that next half would be the start of the nine. Welcome to the stream, RMD 2023. I am finishing up this stretch of track to reach the southern terminus of the Carabasset Valley Railroad in Eustis, Maine. Trying to get to the end of this gray stretch here, because that will be eight miles from Victoria, which is where I imagine Eustis would be. So, as uh, the only two communities I have in my layout right now are 100% fictional. Eustis is real. Eustis is a real place, but trying to get to the yard down there that I'm going to build, but I'm making a very, very straight stretch of track. As for that, I'm probably going to be building some crossings here next. Like I said, as we do get into the community of Eustis, be a couple of roads that I want to have go over the tracks here, so... And that would be about eight miles. So here will be the start of the yard, pretty much. So eight miles. That's a lot of track when you think about it. A lot of just nothing in between. And there will be some industries along here and whatnot. I'm going to get some industries and maybe a branch, maybe one branch before... Uh, line branches off to go east towards the eastern terminus or north towards Warren. Alrighty. So there's that. That is a very monotonous, very straight, very boring section of track. So, we'll just take a Take a little jaunt up it, show you, and then I'm going to go get that crossing built. So it makes a slight jaunt to the left. Goes back to a single, single main line. We're just flying along. This will all be trees and maybe uh, some ponds next to it. Sorry, trying to keep it straight. And this is where it branches off to go to the eastern terminus. Here's this train crossing that I get it hooked up, so probably tackle that next. There'll probably one here. I might put one just right there. So we'll put two in this little area, like I said, as we do get close, because we're about mm, I'd say three or four miles from Eustis, so I imagine, like I said, some houses and some you know, some more rural roads out this way. So we will get those all set up to go. 
something a little more entertaining for you guys than just watching me build track, I suppose. Or maybe you guys like that. I don't know. I don't know what you guys like, so. But this is pretty much how I do crossings. I am going to take this phone call real quick, guys, so I'm going to just exit out. I'm just going to exit out of trains real quick. I'm going to mute my mic because I do got to take this call. I'm actually going to have to call back. So one moment. I, I do apologize for this. My girlfriend's mom did just go to the hospital, so I'm sure that's what she's calling about. So one moment, please. Sorry. Hey, sweetie. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Good. You all right? Yeah. Hey, sweetie. Yeah. No, I, I drank some water doing? and stuff. So. You all right? A lot, and then I went hey, to bed. Sweetie. So I imagine probably sleeping on. A yeah. No, I, I drank some water stomach and stuff, Probably didn't help so. much. You all right? Yeah, I got Taco Bell. Probably not the best thing to eat. I mean, right to bed I did on, eat so. a lot, and then I went hey, to bed. Sweetie. So I imagine probably sleeping on. It right. and probably didn't help so. much. Okay. Or if you all right? Yeah, I got Taco Bell. Probably, probably not the best thing to eat. I mean, I did eat a lot, and then I went to bed. Yeah, no, I did eat a lot, and then I went to bed. Probably didn't help much. Okay. Or if yeah, no, your mom she she went out to bed. If you think the dead or whatever, whatever but I'm trying to think, think about what time she went. Yeah, I'd no, say I probably maybe about, about 40, uh, okay. 50 minutes ago. I just figure yeah, I'm gonna. I was just waiting for you to get a little bit more on your shift and whatnot. I mean, I get a little bit closer to your break before I texted you. Yeah, I'd say probably maybe about 40, 50 minutes ago. I just. Figure yeah, I'm gonna. Your I was just waiting for you to get a little bit more on your shift and whatnot. I mean, I get a little bit closer to your break before I texted you or whatever. But I'm trying to think about what time she went. Yeah, I'd say probably maybe about forty. Okay. Yeah. But pain, and I know she probably didn't help much. Figure I'm gonna. I was just waiting for you to get a little bit more on your shift and whatnot. I mean, I get a little bit closer to your break before. Whatever. But I'm trying to think. I don't know. Just. Yeah. Is it is. Okay. Yeah, I know, but she, she was in a lot of pain, and I know she probably didn't help me. Yeah, I'm gonna, I was just waiting for you to get a little bit more on your shift and whatnot. I mean, I get a little bit closer to your break up. Work's going well? Whatever, but I'm trying to... I don't know, just... Yeah. Is it is. Okay. Yeah, I know, but she was in a lot of pain, and I know she probably didn't help me. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was just waiting for you to get a little bit more on your shift and whatnot. I mean, I get a little bit closer to your break up. I'm glad you're having a good shift, baby. I am currently live streaming, so work's going well. That's why I didn't answer your call because I had to exit yeah, out of the train, maybe. go mute my mic, then call you back. But so, work's going else? well. That's why I didn't answer your call because I had to yeah, exit out of the train, train call you back. Then I have people watching me just stare at a blank screen. So well, you don't have to, but so, sorry. Work's going well. Else? That's why I didn't answer the train, maybe. go oh, mute my I mic, then call you back. Then I have people watching. Bye. Screen, so well, are you worse than anything else? else? That's why I didn't answer your call because I had to exit out, out of the train. Maybe go oh, mute my mic and go back. To them. I have people watching. Bye. Screen, so well, you don't have to, but so, sorry. Worse than anything else? That's why I didn't answer your call because I had to exit out of the train. Maybe go mute. Screen, so you don't have to, but sorry. Worse than anything else? That's why I didn't answer your call. To so exit out of the train, train maybe go mute my mic, and then go back to them. I have people watching. Bye. Do, but so, sorry. Okay. Well. Alrighty. If you guys heard that, I'm sorry. Just she did call. I gotta answer that. So that's what happens, but. Just a, just a rough day.
girlfriend's mom, like I said, she went to the hospital today. I don't know what her big deal is, but... Yeah, they're all like family to me, so... Not good when someone someone goes down. So, it is what it is. Almost positive I muted my mic. Not sure how it works out. So, if you guys heard that, I apologize, but... So, I'll just edit that out later. That's just all part of a live stream. Everything's hit or miss, so... Alrighty, let's see here. All right, so that was set for 17. And if there's one thing you will learn over time, Chris, is that into a relationship like mine, you don't ignore your significant other. You know, you always make time no matter what you're doing to answer their call or make sure that they're doing okay, especially when they're at work or something like that or when it is, when their mother is at the hospital cuz you know, that's something important. So and regardless, you know, you always, 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 always make time for your loved ones and whatnot. And, you know, I love my girlfriend a lot. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually proposing to her next year. I'm actually, uh, thinking about settling down or getting there, or getting close to and whatnot, so. Well, actually, that's, that's a good question, uh. RMD, and I would actually like to see that route, because I don't really, no, no one really does those. I mean, everyone does, you know, uh, bigger routes, you know, kind of based out in the West Coast, or, you know, uh, you know, just some more prominent routes, but, um, so how you stream really is you go into YouTube, and you click on your little profile picture, and you go into Creator Studio, and then you go down to live stream, and it's really, really simple. You know, you got you kind of got to download uh, something and stream off of. I got game game show. It's a free app that you. It's a free application that you can pay for to get some other features. Um, I haven't paid for. It. I'm I'm using a completely free service right now. Um, but I I don't know what happens if you pay for it. Really don't care to find out. I'm never gonna pay for it unless I have to. But um, oh, I screwed that up. But um, all you gotta do is just connect it up to your YouTube, you know, and pretty much just start streaming. It's really, really simple. It's really easy. It's just eh, something to talk about, I suppose. Um, oh, I liked it the way it was before. Dang it! Dang it! Here, I'm gonna drag the roads out just a little bit more. That'll work. It's always kind of good to have something to talk about. Um, it helps if you don't have too many distractions or interruptions. But as I will say, life just happens. You know, you can't always, you can't always predict what's going to happen. You can't always, you know, control what's going to happen. But you know, it is what it is. So when when life happens, it happens. But um. Did it ruin it? Nope. That's pretty much good. You know, it's it's real simple to stream. It's just one one thing that, you know, kind of discourages people is when they don't get a lot of views. And my theory is, you know, you, you don't need a whole lot of views. You just need to do it something that you enjoy. So if you enjoy doing something like this, then, uh, you know, it, it might be for you. It's just when... I mean, actually, this is a relatively good live stream. Of course, I probably flubbed it because I got on the phone and uh, whatnot, which, again, life happens. But, um, you know, it's just, if you get five people or you get 5,000 people, it, it's, you know, got to keep in mind that it's a good start. So, I wish you all the best, man. Um, actually, I'll, I'll subscribe to you because, like I said, if, I'd be curious to see 
you know what you can do. I'm always curious to see. I think there needs to be more people uh, making videos or streaming in the community, you know, because the trans community, I mean, we really only have just a handful of people doing stuff like what, you know, I'm doing or like what Approach Medium doing. And if there's anything that he's, you know, me and him have ever talked about is the fact that, you know, we really don't have anything to tie the community together, you know, for anyone to come by. It's not like City Skylines with uh, Flux Trance or Strict Toaster or, you know, all the people coming about on the... Uh, city skylines you know trains doesn't really have anyone which is sad because we there are so many great people on here that you know if they just got on youtube or just decided hey i'm gonna go you know stream this today or hey i'm gonna make a video of this today the community could be so much closer we could identify with someone we could find ourselves you know being like yeah i saw a, you know a boeing fan 727 doing this today or yeah, did you see what uh, RMD 2023 did or something, you know, the, the other day? You know, if we just had more people like you, me, and Approach, you know, the community, I think, could be so much more together. But that's just me. So I definitely highly recommend to anyone with the time, the skill, or the know-how, you know, if you can create a decent enough route and wholesome or factual, but if you could just get a good conversation going and whatnot, and like I said, get something unique, I probably don't have anything very unique other than the fact that I have a very large amount of interruptions on my channel, but, um, you know, I like to think I can have a good conversation, so, but yeah, just let me know when you start, man, and I will definitely be there to check it out, and, you know, and maybe, uh, start posting it somewhere in the, tr in the trains forum, or, you know, start, you know, getting on YouTube, make, you know, because if you can get the word out, then it's going to be a hell of a lot easier. Alrighty, so there's one crossing. Probably gonna, like I said, put another crossing right here. Or close to right here. I gotta... I don't know what's gonna happen if I put a trigger right here. Because of trains coming off of this, uh... This Y. Or soon to be Y. But... Because this Y is gonna... Probably start here, and I... Right, it's probably going to start back here and start to make the corner because I don't want to get too close to the point where it's going to be a tight corner. So I might actually just go ahead and do that now while I'm thinking of it. So let me actually get the track height, get vertex height. Let me see if always a great day when it does, doesn't do that. Yeah, the question is, yeah, that's that's turning. So probably actually started right here on the straight stretch, straight stretch of track. If I could talk at all today, so now I will ask, did you guys hear my phone call? Because I get that bad feeling you guys did, and I uh, nothing to hide, but definitely. Uh, don't care to have all my personal information shared upon uh, shared to the world as that will be forever etched in stone. Well, what did I do? Now, why does it do that? Oh, I know why it's doing that. Duh. There we go. And we'll just keep this Y a turning. Big wheel keeps on rolling. Yeah. I mean, I, hit the, I thought I hit the button to mute my mic, but I guess not. So, oh well. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, if you guys heard me say I love you 55 billion times to my girlfriend, then... Well, you guys hear me say I love you 55 billion times to my girlfriend. I'm never going to hide my love for her. No matter what I'm doing, so... And that's just the simple fact about it. So, 
And I guess that's the other thing about live streams. Never be afraid to be yourself. So, wouldn't have heard that conversation. But, I guess we will know for the future. That's a little lopsided. Oh, God. Now I'll have to drag that back. Hmm. Well, if there's one thing about my relationship is uh, <laughs> we definitely, definitely say I love you a lot. We don't just say it to say it either. I mean, we do mean it, so... Everything I do, you know... My job, I got that. I got that job for her. You know, I work for her. You know, I I, I work for me too. Cause definitely, uh, don't forget about yourself. But I definitely, you know, I work. I work a lot for her. You know, cause she's my future. You know, she's she's the reason why I'm in Illinois and not Maine. You know, I moved out here for her, and you know, and I love her a lot, and. It can be a little embarrassing when uh, you're trying to just uh, not completely share your... But, you know, it's... Uh, if you remember, I don't know if you guys were ever around for the beginning of YouTube, but if the uh, YouTube slogan when they first started, it was uh, YouTube, broadcast yourself. And it was all about being yourself, so uh, I guess I just broadcasted myself, more or less. So... Oh, and Chris, there's, I mean, I know it's cliche to say that, that, you know, there is someone out there for everyone, but I mean, there is, there is someone out there for everyone. So, you know, I've seen some, you know, kind of some nerdy dudes they are just like, you know, completely, you know, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but, you know, it's like, you just wouldn't, you know, think out of stereo typing and let's face it we we stereotype people more than we should we want to or more than we think go about our whole daily existence and i'm not saying you guys do but i'm saying you know just being human we we do stereotype a lot um but you know you see I think if you make two tracks that the track is connecting to is straight, and then if you, yeah, now I've I've always found before I finish what I was saying, I always find turns very, uh, very interesting to work with on trains, uh, especially when connecting them. They just there's just something about them that just I don't know, if, I don't know what the big deal is, but they just don't work too well, or ugh, it just isn't smooth or something. I don't know what the what the big issue is, but Turns have always been a major problem of mine on trains in general. But but as I was saying, like I said, we stereotype a lot throughout our day-to-day -day existence. So, but, you know, you, you go to school and, you, see, you know, there's these guys that, I wouldn't say are nerds, but, you know, they're, they're kind of, they might classify as that uh, more or less. So, and you know, when we think of a nerd, we think of someone who's just uber smart and... You know, it's kind of a know-it-all or and whatnot. And when you think of 
who they'll end up with in life is someone who's a nerd or, you know, someone who really isn't good looking and whatnot. And that's just what we stereotype a nerd out to be. And, or, you know, who men, did that guy just pass on a double yellow? 100% illegal, buddy. 100% illegal. Bad drivers. But, um, you know, you just, you just stereotype them out to, you know, someone who's just going to end up with someone who's not really attractive looking. Because even when you also say that, you know, looks aren't everything, you still judge someone off by how they look. You know, and if they aren't too uh, attractive looking, then, you know, you're like, oh, well, whatever, they ain't going to end up with someone good looking. But we still do it anyways. But, um, but you know, so you see these people and you're like, oh, they're probably end up someone who's just not really so good looking and whatnot and then they end up with you know a girl who's just absolutely drop dead gorgeous you know and again looks aren't everything but they just end up with this totally amazing girl whose personality is 100 percent just so amazing and she's just literally the most perfect being ever crafted and whatnot and they ended up with this girl that all you know everyone else would just die to be with but just because you know she looks beautiful and whatnot and uh you know and this total nerd ends up with her this guy that you just would not expect to and it works out i mean that's kind of how i feel you know kind of in your situation yeah, you know, stereotypically, you give them classes, and, I mean, it's not stereotypically, but it's just, it's kind of how it is sometimes. I mean, it's like, I classify myself as a nerd, because look at my channel name, BoeingFan727. I am a huge plane av geek, or whatever you want to call me. I love planes. Planes are everything to me. I, I love planes so much, but... You know, and never in a million years would I thought would I have ended up with a girl so stunning and so beautiful and so absolutely 100% just everything my current girlfriend is. I mean, she is just so incredible. And, you know, and it was funny because one of my supervisors, he wasn't being a creep, but he he uh, looked me up on Facebook and he kind of, I wouldn't say went through my girlfriend's profile, but just kind of wanted to see who I was dating because I talk about work that He's like, dude, you are so out of your league. Like, you know, you know, there's there's me. He's like, no offense, there's you, and then there's her. Like, how did you pull that off? I'm like, I have no clue how I pulled that off, but I did. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a nerd or if you're a geek. And, you know, you're going to end up with someone. And whether, you know, society views them as good looking or not looks really on everything. Because even though my girlfriend is so drop dead gorgeous, you know, to me, she is beautiful when she wakes up, when she goes to sleep, when she's, you know, having a lazy day. There's never a moment where she isn't good looking, you know, and that's just one thing you also need to learn is, you know, just because you, you know, she might not have that fig, you know, look of, you know, all those girls you see online or whatnot. You know, just because she doesn't look like that doesn't mean she isn't beautiful. And that's just one thing you need to come to terms by is look what's on the inside first. You know, I, I really hate to just be this cliche guy being like, it's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. But it really isn't. You need to take a look at what's on the inside. You know, you just need to view them for all their traits and personalities and, you know, and what they bring to the table in terms of that. Because looks can only get you so far. You can only date someone who looks good and just looks good for so long before you just are like, is there anything else? So, just always, always keep that in mind. Because... If, like, say, if you just date someone who just looks good, but has no, like, personality to them whatsoever, <laughs> like that meme, you're in for a bad time. You are you are totally in for a bad time. You know, just give, give someone a chance. And like I said, there's always someone out there. Whether you're 
a train nerd or a plane nerd or anything, there will always be someone there for you. Just don't ever count yourself out, I guess. Because that would be where I am today. Like, take me back. I've been dating my girl for almost three and a half years now. Take me back maybe four or five years ago, and I would never thought I would have been with the girl I'm with now. Never. Like, I thought I was destined for complete and utter failure, and I thought I would have never ended up with anyone. You know, because I was that guy some years ago. I was like, oh no, I gotta be with that beautiful girl, and I gotta be with her because, you know, she has a, a nice butt, basically, or, you know, she's gonna have, I'm sorry, you know, she's gonna have big boobs, or she's gonna be tall, or, you know, she's gotta be something, you know, she's gotta be this, she's gotta be that. No. You know, and it was completely wrong. You know, that that's kind of where society wants you to look is like society. We, we think as a society, it's okay to do that. Like, and I'm not saying girls are completely, uh, innocent from it too. I mean, girls, it's like, no, I gotta, I gotta date that guy. that's over six feet and he's got to have abs and da, 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 da. But the minute, you know, a guy goes out and says, I got to date a girl who's skinny. Whoa. Why did it? You know, and they go off the walls. Both genders are never, um, uh, is that a guy who's like turning your neck to the to the Mazda? <laughs> but I mean, it's just it's so bad that both you know both genders are guilty of one hundred percent being like you know I only date girls who are you know have a giant butt, huge boobs skinny and you know has to be a certain height and girls are you know girls look at guys that are you know the girls look at guys you know they're shallow if they do that but girls fall into the same thing too it's like they can they only want a guy who's six feet tall and da 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 and it's like double standards much just saying but you know don't don't just date someone off their looks it will get you nowhere nowhere just don't do it so that's my little spiel for the day you know i i don't feel like i'm 100 percent capable of giving relationship advice you know i've only been in a few relationships you know this is my third relationship as they say third time's the charm but you know just don't ever count yourself out or think that you'll never find the one because you're a ch because you could tell the difference between a Mazda and an AC44 9W, you know, there will be someone out there for you. And it just depends. Can they put up with your interests and whatnot? And that's the other thing. Can they put up with your interests? And my girl certainly can. As much as she may not like some of my interests, particularly that being my music, she cannot stand my music. She hates my music. Uh, I listen to Metallica. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Metallica. Um, I think I have them running in the background. Um, that I do not, or either that or I cannot hear. I don't have them running. Oh, yep, there. Yeah, they're, they're a heavy metal band. Very, 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 very heavy. Um... Yeah, she doesn't like Metallica. <laughs> Does not like Metallica at all. Um, but that's my band. That's who I listen to. You know, that's 100% who I listen to. And, uh, she, yeah, she just does not like them. So, but she, she puts up with it. She, you know, she understands that's who I identify with. That's who I listen to. That's who I enjoy. But her music's all right. She listens to Ed Sheeran and all that stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll listen to it, but isn't my general cup of tea. I'm actually going to see Ed Sheeran with her this fall, but I'm going to see Metallica this summer with my dad. So, oh, I cannot wait for that. Metallica at Bush Stadium. Ah. I am going to lose my hearing. I If I do not walk away from that concert without hearing aids, I am going to be thoroughly disappointed. Like, I need to be deaf when I leave that place for at least three days. That is my hopes and my dreams. Like, I dream... <laughs> that is a horrible dream to have. I want to go deaf at this concert. 
If I do not leave this place without my ears bleeding, life will equal not made. <laughs> you went deaf from the CSX-7, but you didn't go deaf from Metallica. No, actually, you want to go deaf. Come to my work sometime. Go out to go work a flight, and then forget your earplugs. Because, yeah, that's that's always fun, to forget your earplugs. And then, oh, hey, you're the guy who has to chalk the plane, so you have to stand there on the side, or at the very front of the plane, as the plane is pulling up. You're on the side that also has the engine running at full tilt. So now you have a jet engine screaming in your ear. But you have to be there because you have to work that flight. Hold on. That is completely crooked. All right, I like that a little bit better. You know, so you have to be there. You know, and you're standing right there on the the Jeopardy side, so the side that you board on. That engine's running. You're standing out there as this plane inches closer at you. That engine is running because the other side of the plane, the engine is off because they pull up the gate predominantly with one engine on. Um, so yeah, no, that 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 engine's screaming, and literally you just hear. I, I won't replicate it, but you you just literally hear like your ears just dying. Like, you could just hear yourself slowly dying on the inside. But that's my job. And I 100% run the risk of going 100% deaf or losing my hearing if, every time I forget those ear, earphones or earplugs because, you know, that's it's not safe, you know. But it's, it is what it is. You know, that's my job. I, you know, my job is very dangerous in a sense, but, you know, but that, that's just one thing. Or sitting out on the platform at your local train station after not being home for a year and you just want to see a local freight train pass and it passes with like three cars, but those gondolas are old, squeaky, and it's got to slow down for the crossing because the crossing gates can go down. So you're standing there inches from the tracks and it decides to throw the brakes on and it just screeches, screeches right in your ear. Like high-pitched, 100% metal-on-metal metal screeching. Not like Metallica metal on metal. I'm talking like train metal. So, my ears hate me. Like, I will be deaf by the time I'm like 23. So, like, two years from now. Because I love I love listening to Metallica. I forget my ear protection often at work. And I'm an idiot. So, yeah. And no, I will definitely have my dad hold a phone next to me and play Metallica as Metallica's playing Metallica. Because you just just need more Metallica in your life, man. Like, how metal are you today? I am so metal that I went to a Metallica concert and listened to Metallica while watching Metallica play Metallica. Basically, that's how metal you are today. <laughs> Actually, I saw this photo. It was from, uh... It was a meme from this show called Adult Swim. But, um... It was, uh... This like I don't know if it was real newscast, but it was like this. I'm assuming fake newscast. It was roller coaster hit deer and showered passengers with blood, and the the picture below was from a clip from uh, the show, and it was like one of the characters, and it went, you know, that is the most metal thing I have ever heard. Or yeah, roller coaster decapitates deer and showers passengers with blood. It's like that is the most metal thing I have ever heard. That would probably be the most metal thing I will ever hear in my life, but I hope that never happened because now we have some traumatized people that probably, that would probably be my luck. I hate roller coasters. I'd get on a roller coaster for the first time and then all of a sudden we hit a deer and it showers everyone in blood. That would 100% be my luck. So that's just that. So um, talking about what we're doing here because I can only talk so much about everything else in the world except what I'm doing. Um, just placing some crossings here uh, at this Y, just because, you know, why not? 
Yeah, you cannot leave. That that was horrible. My channel really isn't much to watch there. I I mean, I'm I'm flattered that you like what you see, but my channel is not much at all. It, it's it's okay, but it's nothing really to look at. You know, I've it's it's nothing, honestly. <laughs> so Probably put a crossing right here. Did that happen? I, I hope that didn't happen. I mean, that just sounds absolutely 100% horrific. Like, imagine being the person at the front of that roller coaster because you took that thing head on. Like you were probably the most metal person on that train at the time, or that roller coaster, because you saw that deer, well, you probably split second saw that deer and had no time to react. The eye of the beholder. Mm. Well, they are probably at the freight ends of sanity, but... Afraid and sort of sanity, hear them calling. I am no musician, so let's. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> You're probably never going to watch my streams again if this is what we're going to talk about. I am sorry, man. Oh my god, look at the road. Damn, son, where'd you find that? Walmart. So, yeah, basically what we're doing is we're just putting down some roads that go over the tracks, because why not? Well, I'm happy that you'd rather watch this than TV. That uh, it actually makes me feel rather important a little bit. Like, someone wants to watch me over the television. Like, how cool is that? that? That's pretty cool in my opinion. Like, someone would rather watch me talk about deers getting decapitated by trains over watching TV. Like, I'm pretty honored. Pretty honored right there. You know, it's pretty cool also to have, you know, approach medium pop-up from time to time. Like, you know, I, he's a pretty good friend of mine now, I'd like to say. And it's still cool to have him pop up because he's someone that I watch on YouTube and what not and to have someone that I watch on YouTube watch me still pretty cool it's like I'm, I'm fangirling a little bit you know it's like you know he's just a person that's all people on YouTube are you know anyone that you watch on YouTube they're just people but it's just it's like it's still cool it's still cool but yeah my sister controlled the TV too when we lived together obviously growing up, but yeah, now she would, uh, I mean, she liked the Disney channel, so we'd watch the Disney channel, but that was when I was really young. She's my older sister, so, but she liked the Disney channel. We'd watch, um, some of the cartoons she grew up with, because she grew up in the 90s, so we'd watch some of the old cartoons from then, which nothing are like the best thing on earth. But. Martha Speaks? What the heck is that? Never heard of that. You know, there was a time where if we wanted to change the channel on the TV, we actually had to get up and go hit the buttons on the TV. Like, we would have to get up and physically go to the television and hit the buttons on it to change the channel. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. But... No, I mean, I pretty much grew up with the Disney 
channel. I mean, I grew up on, uh, oh God. Um, I mean, I was around for, you know, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, uh, Phil of the Future. <sighs> God, what else? What other shows were there? There was, uh, yeah, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Then, of course, Sweet Life on Deck. Uh, That's So Raven was one of them. Um, um, the Lizzie, Lizzie McGuire. Yeah, that was one of them. I mean, these were the shows that my sister liked. I, I like Sweet Life of Zach and Cody and Phil of the Future. There was American Dragon, Jake Long. Um, what else was there? It was Disney Channel at the time. Um, another one that I really didn't care for too much, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers. There was, um... God, what else was there? There was, uh, that. There was... Just trying to think here. I'm just, uh... Was that? I mean, there was a lot of shows, and of course, the Cartoon Network was around. And um, mom really didn't care for Cartoon Network. We was we were strictly Disney, according to my mom. My mom was very, very. Uh, she sheltered us very, a lot, but um, but she had to work a lot too. So we would watch. Uh, I'd watch Cartoon Network. So I mean, shows like Courage the Cowardly Dog, Teen Titans. That was a cool one. Oh. I loved the Teen Titans. Loved it. I was very, very upset when they when they canceled it because the creator thought that kids didn't care. You know, why, why would he make a show with a complex, you know, complex storyboard if, you know, kids were just going to watch it? And it's like, no, I loved it. Come back with it. I uh, I missed that show so much. But the dog, Teen Titans, um, of course, SpongeBob. You know, couldn't go wrong with SpongeBob. And I'm talking like the classics, you know, all the classic SpongeBob, not the new crap that you guys got now. No offense, but new SpongeBob is nothing compared to old SpongeBob. But oops, I did not want to do that. Um, what else? We had a lot of shows. Oh, Fairly Odd Parents. That was another one. That was that was pretty cool. I liked Fairly Odd Parents. That was another one. Um, Jimmy Neutron. Jimmy Neutron. I mean, there was a lot of shows. A lot of shows when I was growing up. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but I mean, there was a ton. But Sp SpongeBob, that, that was a big one. My mom hated SpongeBob. Hated it. Hated it. I could never watch SpongeBob at home if she was home. Ah, oh, she hated SpongeBob. I don't know why. But she hated SpongeBob. But yeah, no, the new SpongeBob compared to the old SpongeBob, absolute garbage. Like, I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. Oh, what the heck is this? Oh, it's a signal bridge. Let's just go forever. Let's just have 80 tracks all go by the same place at once. That works. It could never watch it. But 28-7. 28 hours, 7 days a week, because that's a thing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was putting down crossings. Just kind of want the in the lights, and that's about it. I just want the pole with the gate. Hold on a second. I gotta find it. Oh, is actually this one I'm looking for? Yeah, I think so, but those little LED lights on it, not really digging those. That doesn't really scream roll a main for me. I think we'll just go back to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm losing my voice now. 
always wonderful timing. I'm trying to replicate a crossing that I've seen up in a bit, or seen, I seen it, I seen it, that I saw. Now, if that cross buck was just about yay lower, just about yay lower, I can put another set of lights right there because that was what I seen in a video. I saw it on the inner tube. I just had the dang pole. Give me the pole. <laughs> I seen my first ace. Gates only. See, I, I like this, but it's just like, I need the pole. Without the pole, this just ain't nothing. Man, I get it. It could be for a, a larger cross. Alas. Wait a second. Let me just shoot to Canada real quick. Welcome to Canada. I think I did it here somewhere. Yeah, I kind of like this. Now, is that just the pole, or what is this? Dang it! Just give me the pole. A pole! Alrighty. Crossings uh, set up properly. So I need these all to do flash on the one setting. And this one flashes on. Nope. This one. One flashes on. Okay, seriously. Bring me this one. In the same orientation. Versus opposite each other. Alright, let's go back down to main because main is the superior. Superior location. I just needed the pole. That's all I needed. Now this is actually 100% going the extra mile in terms of this, so... The nice thing is... Well, actually, wait a second. Does traffic use this road? I'm sorry guys, I'm jumping again. To the yard. That I always redo. 55 billion times. So I don't think traffic spawns on this road, but it will drive on this road. Yeah, so we watch them come over the hill. Ooh. I'm sorry. I just need to stretch like nobody's business. Will it use the road? Yes, it does. Yeah, I just, I don't think it spawns on the road. So yeah, if you look, nothing's driving up this way. So as long as I don't hook that up to anything, I don't have to use a traffic stopper, which, I mean, I might anyways, because knowing me, I'm probably going to hook it up to the road. And actually have traffic drive down it, but... Where did it go? Oh, it's behind me. All right, so there's that. No, 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 no. I need grade. I'm sorry. ATLS. Actually, I will put this over here because I'm going to use that. One direction, 12 by 24.
and I don't know, something about this particular crossing four and did it over in Warren. I think I did it twice. It gives me that old kind of feel to it. Like, you know, that because the Pan American did kind of own this track at one point. I'm now I'm reselling it to uh, Carabasset because I'm actually re going to have Carabasset be its own operation now. So, in the time that this rail line was op maintaining maintenanced by Guilford or Pan American, um, they really didn't put a whole lot of money into it. So they took like these old cross bucks like this and just threw some lights on it just for added protection instead of completely redoing the whole line. So. But I just like the look. I don't know, something about having like these big, huge lights on this this sign. Something about it I just like. I like it. I could throw them lower. But I think something about having them like really up high, like right here. I just liked it right there. So I'm going to attach that to the pole. I'll probably lower it. I think the race is still on. Sorry, I am into NASCAR. I'm going to get that on on the side just so I can watch what's going on. So there's one thing I do like having Sundays off for it is the fact that I get to watch the race. Alright, one second. Where the heck is the race? Not find. Eh, oh well. Oh, I think I found it. As I shut the TV off. Way to go, Jaden. We'll just uh, wait for that to reboot and we'll uh, look for the next light to attach to the sign.
And I lost it. <sighs> yeah, whatever. I'm done. Train tunnel is too low. Which tunnel? The one, uh... That way? I mean, it fits, uh... Too low, we're gonna have an issue. I did not test it out with something that I usually try. Uh, that is a pretty tight clearance. Well, I appreciate you for pointing that out, David. I would have never known up until I probably would have drove a couple of these auto racks if I would ever use the auto racks. But that leads me in the next predicament. Now I gotta redo the tunnel. Let me see here. Gotta move you up so I don't lose you. You are four. Well, I mean, I'm not running double stacks, but at the same time, I do imagine a couple of these auto racks will make their way down the line, and you still probably want the clearance anyways, just on the off chance you do have to move something up the track that might be a little tall. Still, you know, we go to, uh, let me see here. Yeah, you still probably want a good good bit of clearance from these excessive height, you know, from these box cars. You don't probably want them running right up against the top of the tunnel. So, I do appreciate that 100%, David. Always good to have people looking out for you. But now the good question is... I think this is exactly what I used. Yep. Or well... Yeah, that's pretty much what I used. Well, that's better. But that's a double track, and I mean that probably ugh, I don't want to say is probably one point five feet, but it could ugh, it might do the job, but at the same time, I mean, I do have container ish cars running down the track which if you would go back to uh, when I was showing off the yard I'm kind of doing what um, I see through because um, we do have some container flat cars that really running through Portland, Maine and there's you know one container on a car but still you'd probably want the clearance just on the off chance so Now that would probably work. I just don't know about the answer. What the heck is that? Oh, I know what that is. Take me across the sky. Really? Well, I thought that would have worked like... Well, now I foresee a second problem. <laughs> I foresee a really large problem. So... Yeah. World...
world's worst track. The first one, I was just able to click and go, and it went right through the terrain. Here, let me try something real quick. Just going to boom, boom. And I'm just going to go, hmm. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I could have it right up against the ceiling like that, but for realism's sake, which is something I, I do strive to go towards, uh, definitely probably don't want that. Now I just need to find a good tunnel. Ooh. I think that's exactly what I just used. Yeah, pretty much. So... Something done went wrong there. What in the world? Oh, great. There we go. Oh, now we got this issue. What in the world is going on here? Oh, this game is going to be the death of me today. It's going to be the death of me. All right, what in the world? I had it for a second, I had it for a second. Okay, no, didn't have it. Sorry, I just don't know what's going on with this track. Maybe I can overlook it, but maybe it'll just fix itself with time, but I was not doing this a minute ago. Yeah, it's fine over here. Something on that side. I'm sure it'll take care of itself. Why do I keep doing that? But I need to find a tunnel, which I probably don't have. Yeah, I just have tunnel track. <sighs> I don't think I have a tunnel. Hmm. Yeah, it's just the track. Just the track. Yeah, no, that's like, that's really tight. Hmm. Well, that's a problem.
that's probably another European. That's probably not what I'm looking for. Hmm. Seriously, what in the world? Oh, it's twin track. I don't want twin track. I want single. Yeah, what's up? Another freaking I just don't understand what's the problem, but I mean I could do that, but again I'm just trying to find one that works for the area. Dark stones seem to work better. The only issue is I gotta move this track back. Hold on, give me a second. I wonder if I do this. Nope. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. But Yeah, I guess we could just probably make one track abandoned while the other one's functioning. I suppose I could probably detail that to work somehow, but if I had it my way... It's important, because as pointed out by David, you need... You know, he wouldn't... I'm sure he wouldn't have said anything at the track as properly functioning and cleared, but and that is something very important though to have no, I do not want you flip you around. I gotta fix the terrain a little bit. Or attempt to, anyways. What in the actual? Okay. You know what? This is. We're gonna do it this way, and then I gotta go re-edit the terrain. But we're just gonna take this terrain height, and we're just gonna no, no, no. Going in into the terrain now, so we'll just do it this way.
There. We'll just do it this way. And maybe it'll work out a little bit better. I don't know. Only time will tell us. And it's got to spit out right over here. Probably just hook. No, why do I keep doing that? Just hook you up right here. Good. What I can actually do is take this and move it down into the tunnel. So now waiting for the last second for the crossing gates to go down. And I'm thinking terrain should be enough to, uh, or the grade should be enough. I'll, I'll test that out later, but. Looks like we got that stupid terrain issue fixed. Hopefully, we'll find out here in a second, but. Gonna need this terrain height right here. I'm just gonna fill it in. Just for the moment, then I'll retouch up the terrain. Make it hilly and less obvious that there's a tunnel. Of course, I'll fix the road too. When what in the? Oh. oh, thank God it worked. Yeah, I'll definitely edit this down later, I'm, and it's not going to stay like this, but I'm going to take a terrain height, and we're going to use it. That should... We'll lower that down. Tunnels are a pain in the butt, I guess, so... Is... How well does an auto rack fit down in here? Or, you know, we'll just go ahead and... Oh, look at that. There's so much more clearance now. I guess the tunnel kind of works. That an old kind of cobblestone look to it. Maybe done, done way back in the steam era. So, tick now. So, I like it. I like it. But, yeah, I definitely have to come back later and at the terrain and I'll figure out the uh, the grade. I'm sure the grade still works well now, so. So. Just 
get this big gap filled in. How long have I been going for? I think a few hours now. At least a few hours. <clears throat> By making this big obvious terrain scar, I will remember to come back later and fix this. But look at that there tunnel. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Now let's find out the gradient real quick, though. Um, yeah, no, I think you're definitely right about that. It was de technically more built in the transition era, uh, given the given the time frame that I set for this. I mean, it's not terrible. Definitely not uncommon, but it is a little much. But I guess what we'll probably do is maybe put down a... A little stretch of, uh, let me see. Put down these abandoned ties. Maybe? I don't know. I mean, how do you guys think that looks? Oh yeah, it goes up because of the terrain. And lower it. Come back. I guess that doesn't look too bad, but maybe you guys have a different opinion. <sighs> yeah, no, I like it. Well, I think... Okay, no. I was making sure that part of the track was not... Uh, was not straight. Alrighty, well, tunnel is fixed. Definitely like that a lot more, so. Hmm. No, it's gonna bug me. I guess it's all right. Of course, I'll have to move this up now. Move this back. Is it floating? Oh, yeah, I think it's on the wrong track. Yeah, it was on the wrong track. There we go. Good. 
Alrighty. Alrighty. Well, like I said, yeah, definitely going to come back and fix that. I'll get that all touched up, but the tunnel definitely looks a little bit better now. So let's zoom back down this way. To whatever I was doing. I think I was uh, building the crossing. Yeah, I was building this. Times at 5.09. Started this one at 3 o'clock, so I've been going for about two hours. I think we're probably going to wrap it up here pretty quick, because definitely been going for quite a while, and I tried to keep these things going forever, but yeah, probably probably call it pro probably call it here. But so I think we pretty much accomplished everything I wanted to today. I wanted to get this uh, stretch of track done from here to here. Built some crossings along the way. I did uh, spend a little more time doing that than anything. Of course, a few interruptions in between, and it does take a little bit more time than you think. And then, uh, of course, there's this tunnel, which we had to redo and f play with and figure out how that works. So, but... So you are... That's right. You're, you're Eastern Time, Chris. I'm Central. In the St. Louis area, but so we redid this tunnel. Like I said, I'll, I'll touch up the terrain uh, in the off time. Uh, I still have tomorrow off. I might do a quick stream, maybe. I'll let you guys know um, if I do or not, just because uh, I can only do so much. <laughs> I can only do so much. So, like I said, did this tunnel. Did a lot of good work today. I'm really, really, really happy with the work we did today. Um, you know, I'm close. We're definitely getting close to something, something worth showing. You know, very, very excited for this next step here on the line, making the terminus down in Eustis. Um, I will, I will get this yard detailed a little bit more too. I'll get Carabas, get that working out here. But other than that, I really do appreciate you guys for turning out today me informed on uh, what you're going to be doing there in terms of streaming. Uh, David, thank you for informing me about the tunnel, man. Uh, I really do appreciate that. It's, that's why I do stream is because, you know, it, it it's nice to have an extra eye just looking out and being like, oh, hey, you know, this, this doesn't look good, or hey, you know, that looks a little too low, or uh, that's too tight, or you could do this a little bit better. You know, it's always nice to have an extra eye kind of looking out for you. Oh, and in terms of container cars, like I was saying before, uh, this is kind of what I see up in Portland is uh, kind of a flat car kind of thing. And they pretty much just put like a 40-foot 40, 40 container on it, and then they ship it up to Portland. That's pretty much what I see. Of course, my game would like to load, so... I mean, it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, RMD, um, you know, for me, I was doing that, or for some people, it works where, you know, they, you know, like, say I put the track down for this yard, and then I detail it, um, you know, that kind of works, I'm kind of a little bit all over the place in terms of that, you know, one day, it's like, all right, I want to work on, care back on it, and then I'm going to detail it, but now I'm kind of at the point where it's like, you know what, I just want to get the length of the track done, I want to get everything built up, things, so... We'll just do that. Um, you know, I kind of want to, kind of want to do that. But it depends on your building style. Um, I would experiment a little bit if I was you, and be like, "All right, well, let's try, uh, let's try building a track and then uh, detailing along it." it. Really depends on what you want to go for. Experiment a little bit, see what you like to do. Um, also, um, like I said, I do have a friend of mine working on a reskin, but if any of you are, you know, proficient at reskinning, um, I do have a set fleet, oh god, that's a little loud, I do have a set fleet of, uh, trains that I have operating for the line, as you can see, I kind of have them set up here, uh, the GP-15s, uh, the C-30-1, the F-7 A and B units, uh, we're just leasing this, this, HL, we're leasing a couple of SD-60s from HLCX. But um, if you're proficient enough at reskinning, uh, 
if you can get in touch with me, that would be great. Um, just because, you know, I would like to kind of get a skin going on some of these trains to, sh to showcase. And, you know, it's definitely uh, free advertisement because those trains will always be in here. And I'm hoping, you know, soon, the next little bit here, to get a better laptop or a computer of some sort. I'm still trying to work on a uh, computer. Um, got some better specs than my current laptop. So maybe hoping to get some uh, rail, rail thing videos in. If you maybe want uh, your, you know, work showcased or would just like to help me out a little bit or, you know, maybe you have a good idea for a skin. Because uh, I already have something that I, I kind of have in mind, but just let me know, guys, because I have no skills whatsoever. Um, you know, I don't really even have, I don't really have any applications that can do that. But like I said, you know, anyone would like to help me out. Anything's appreciated. Uh, if there's any content that you you think you create to add into the line in terms of CBBR, Care by Valley Railroad. Let me know. Let me know. Always open to everything. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to start exiting out here so I'm not doing that long, awkward process after I say goodbye. Um, but I will be um, opening up my channel to social media a little bit more. So if you want to add me on uh, Snapchat, again, just uh, look up BoeingFan727. Um, I will more than likely add you um, on Instagram as well, BoeingFan727. Um, and I uh, wish that that would be cool too. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will more than likely see you guys tomorrow. Take care. See you guys.